，我们即将进入压轴的最后一场次——艺术品典藏与资产管理。现在，让我们欢迎正修科技大学艺术修复保存科学研究室主任吴汉忠博士、安盛艺术品保险理赔专员及风险评估员简家鼎先生，以及普艺科技有限公司蔡月执行总裁。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Taipei Forum. Now we are moving to the last session. And please allow me to invite the moderator and the panelists of this session to introduce the topic, Appraisal and Science of Art Asset Management with us. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you. 很荣幸哦，今天可以来这边哦主持这一场论坛。哦，去年去年的布单比较重一点哈、哦，去年我是当当主讲的，哦，今年嗯，刚刚认识了一下两位哈、哦，因为今天你看两位都那么帅啊啊，所以我是变最老的。哎，那等一下要跟大家分享的这些。题目啊，它是比较特殊的哦。一在一个部分是哦，关于艺术品鉴价。那艺术品鉴价，它其实啊，在我们不管是投资或者是收藏或者是嗯，保保险等等，它其实会从一些风险评估的方面来跟大家分享一下說，说到底呃，艺术品它要怎么去鉴价，还有它一些比较重要的一些内容<咳>。那另外那个蔡博士哦。他这个普艺这两个字，普艺公司嘛，对吧？普艺这两个公司，那这两个字下的真的是非常的好。<咳>一般我们可能如果是学人文科学或社会科学，对“普”这个字不是那么的，哎、欸，了解。但是像我学化学的，我看到这个“普”哇<咳>，用的真好。因为我们所有的分析化学，哦，或者是尤其是从那个非破坏的面向来看，全部都是用到光谱这个东西。啊，然后他又跟艺术，好有一个很很深的一个关联性，所以，我我个人是认为说这个东西它非常的贴切。那所以，等一下蔡总裁他也会带来一些比较先进的技术。好，那这个部分，相相信待会两位那个讲者会带给大家非常丰富的一个资讯。那我们就先欢迎简先生先帮我们做一些演讲。Hi. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'll first like to start with uh, thanking Joyce and also Michelle for inviting me to speak um, to every one of you this afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining in uh, on a Saturday afternoon, no less. Um, my name is Kadeen Khan. I'm from Hong Kong, and the topic I'm going to speak to you today is art appraisal and its application for art insurance. Two quite big subjects. So I hope um, in the next 20, 20 minutes I'll be able to give you some insights on both. Um, I would like to start with giving you a little bit of background, telling you, giving you some idea like why I'm qualified to speak about this topic per se. Um, I'm the claim specialist and risk surveyor for Exrad Asia. Exrad is the number one art insurance company in the world. We insure private and corporate collectors, museums, galleries, auction houses, dealers, exhibitions, and transits. In Asia, we cover Hong Kong, Singapore, China, Malaysia, Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. At the same time, I'm also an accredited member, Fine Art, of International Society of, of Appraisers, ISA. ISA was founded in 1979 and is the largest of the professional personal property appraisal associations in the USA and Canada. So this is my rundown for today. Um, I guess I should start with telling you a bit about art insurance first, so that you know how it applies. So you know how art appraisal applies to art insurance. Then I'll talk about art, in, uh, art appraisal. How does it facilitate art insurance? I'll tell you a bit about the three main approaches to get value and the common types of values for art appraisal. 
And then I'll just briefly give you some idea of how a professional appraisal report should look like, and also uh, introduce you to some of the um, well-recognized associations. And at the end, if I have time, I'll also um, talk about how damage claims are handled and how does other appraisal help in that respect. So art insurance. What is art insurance? In principle, the basic concept is it ensures the policyholders against physical loss for or damage to their art collections. Usually happens from fire, water, theft, and accidental damage. So at least in money terms, it secures the policy holder from in case of unforeseeable events and sort of like a safety net to transfer the risk from the owner or custodian of the art, art collections to the art insurance company. Okay, so how does art insurance different or better than your common like mass market products? First of all, it provides an all risk cover, which means that any risk that is not specifically omitted are automatically covered. So if you buy an insurance, say for your home, like a fire insurance, something happened, you have to prove to the insurance company that a fire occurred and this is my loss. But find that insurance is actually the other way around. Like if we, insurance company, wanted to decline your claim, we have to prove it's one of the exclusions on the policy. So that's a big difference. It provides worldwide cover. So even like during transits, when it's on loan to museums or consigned to dealers, auction house is also covered. It provides automatic cover for new acquisitions. So if a buyer bought an art piece like in our Taipei, he doesn't need to call um, his agent immediately. Um, he will probably have a, around 60 days on the cover to inform the insurance company afterwards. And uh, it can cover an artwork to an extremely high limit. Any amount agreed between the policy holder and the insurance company on what we call, in the, the industry called, the agreed value. So I want, I want you to keep this agreed value in mind because this is going to be my um, focus on the next two slides. It doesn't only pay for restoration costs, but it also pay for any depreciation following a cover loss, cover damage. And we insurance company also have an international network of uh, art experts like advisors, logistic companies, curators, lawyers. In case if a um, collector needed, we can recommend to them. And also the staff we have also have art knowledge, art background. So art collectors will be speaking with someone who, who understands their needs. Um, like I mentioned, these are some of the typical types of uh, policies that uh, you see uh, most often. Um, to protect the private collectors, corporate collectors, we usually use agreed value, okay? So for art galleries and dealers, sometimes we use agreed value. If they bought something maybe 20 years ago and the, the price gone up a lot, um, we would use agreed value. Uh, if it's something that they maybe just bought recently, we would use acquisition cost. Uh, if it's a consignment from a collector or an uh, artist, then we use consignment value. If it's uh, sometimes we can also arrange to um, insure it at a percentage of selling price. And if it is sold to a collector, like during the transit, we insure at the um, sold price. So it could be a combination of, of um, several. Um, auction houses doesn't really use agreed value, they use reserve, written on the uh, consignment agreement between the auction house and the uh, seller. Uh, if, they don't have, if they haven't signed it yet, then uh, it would be a midpoint between the higher and lower estimate. And again, if it is sold, it's the hammer price. And for museums, if it is their own collection, we also use agreed value most of the time. And exhibition and transit, if it's on loan for, uh, from a collector, agreed value again. And uh, if it's on loan from an artist or gallery, then we sometimes, mo most of the time, use the um, consumer value. So I hope um, the example will give you let you understand why there's a need for a professional opinion from an impartial, competent third party to provide proper valuation of the items in order to safeguard everyone's interests.
because it does happen. Sometimes we do have um, policy holder or clients who come to us want to insure at this price. And when we do our urination, we think that it probably should be that price. So really, there's a big need for a third party, competent third party to do the appraisal and give an honest opinion of the value. So now I come to the uh, other appraisal part. What is other appraisal? In simplest term, is an opinion of value or cost. But um, in Black's Law Dictionary, I think it gives a very good definition. It says, it should be a valuation or an estimation of value of property by these interest persons. So someone who doesn't have interest of the property of suitable qualifications. It further states that it is the process of ascertaining a value of, of an asset or liability that involves expert opinion. So some form of evaluation should be involved rather than explicit market transactions. So why, why do people go, like, go to an appraiser to get their artworks appraised? Um, like for me, most commonly I, I come across is um, for obtaining insurance coverage. Sometimes they just need the value of the access for accounting purposes, like for company, for example. Or if someone, if they want to, pl pl uh, if they want to plan for their estate or a divorce division. Now it's getting more common is to seek loan against the arts, um, art as collateral, or making non-cash charitable donations. So the um, charity organizations may need the um, amount. And something that is not done more often, which is just to know the value of the artworks so that they can make an informed decision before making any purchase or sale. So this is how, this is some of the um, um, items on how art appraisal can facilitate art insurance. So it can give the correct amount of insurance coverage. Like the policy holder, they can have the comfort of knowing exactly the amount they will be paid if something bad happened to their collection, right? It proves that the property exists. What does that mean? It means that um, for insurance company, we need to know that that item actually exists. So appraisal report, we will know that at least on that day, at that location, this piece of art were actually there. Okay, and it proved the property's pre-damaged condition in case of a claim because, of course, if the damage is before the insurance coverage, obviously we are not going to um, um, put it as part of our um, uh, claim. And um, a detailed inventory with description and values will help facilitate claims. So when a claim comes in, the client let me know which item it is on the on the policy. Then I look at it. I know the amount, I know the description, and then we can, if the, um, um, the incident is straightforward, then I can pretty much go towards the settlement, right? And um, for insurance company, it can also help for us to estimate risk and exposure. If we say there's a building, like in a building, there's a 100 million US worth of art in that building, then we will have to know that the security in place is like secure enough for us to provide the coverage. And also, let's say if it is uh, 20 million worth of collection, if one piece is already 80 million, then we need to know that that particular piece is securely um, taken care of. It helps all parties to monitor change in values. Ideally, we suggest everyone to have the values reviewed every three to five years. And uh, at damage claims, it will help to determine any or how much is the loss in value. I'll talk about it more towards the end of the presentation. So this is a common workflow of an appraisal. It always starts with a client having a need, like the need that I mentioned, to approach the appraiser. The second stage is the appraiser will find out from the client his intended use and the objective of the appraisal. Using those, the appraiser will determine his or her scope of work, okay? And the next step is they arrange the appraiser to perform physical inspection on site, 
and then he'll go back and conduct research, and then they'll move on to the report writing. Okay? Thank you.